All right. Well, you know what? It is 5 p.m. on the West Coast here. So uh, we're going to kick this uh, meetup off and, and get it started here. So welcome, everyone, to the February uh, version of the Vancouver Power BI and Modern Excel User Group Meetup. Um, today, we've got Celia Alves is with us. But before we uh, dive into Celia's content, I'm just going to go and uh, and start off with the, um, the regular old, uh, you know, Thanks to our sponsors and all that kind of jazz. So uh, if you're not aware, skillwave.training is our uh, our feature sponsor or title sponsor for all this. This is the training division that uh, I run with Matt Allington, where we focus on training people on how to be really good with Excel and Power BI, uh, Power Query, DAX training, and, and all kinds of other good stuff there. Uh, Excel Guru is uh, my company, the parent company of, uh, of Skillwave, and Monkey Tools is the software program that I write and distribute as well to help you build better data models faster. If you work with Power Query and Power Pivot, you should definitely check it out. Uh, one thing that I do want to just quickly mention as far as uh, monkey tools goes as well. Um, I actually just released a brand new knowledge base article, which actually goes and explains all about our latest feature that we've actually just released called the Biblio Monkey, which is a library that you can use to actually store queries and DAX measures and things like that inside your workbook. And even if you don't actually pay me for a pro license on this, you get better features if you do, of course. Uh, but this actually works on the free version of Monkey Tools. So you can actually start storing things here instead of scattered across notepad files on your computer. So you should definitely check that out. If you haven't, uh, just go to uh, monkeytools.ca and you can download a free version or trial version. Um, or a pro version. We always love it when people do that too. Uh, our next meetups coming up, our Power BI track, we've got Joseph Yates is going to be joining us on February 16th at 5 p.m. Uh, Joseph is going to be giving a presentation on the things that he's learned along the way in his Power BI journey. And I believe he's also going to be giving us the what's new that night as well. So it's going to be a, a lot of presentation from Joseph. Uh, we're super happy to, uh, to have him back uh, doing the feature presentation uh, instead of just the what's new. And then um, for our Excel track, we've got uh, Faraz Sheikh that's going to be coming up and joining us on March 9th. He's going to be talking about re uh, report automation with Office Scripts and Power Automate. I know there are a couple of uh, big passion areas for Faraz. Uh, we do have a 1 p.m. Pacific start time for this one here. And uh, just, you know, sort of be aware of that. Both of these are open for RSVPs now. Um, the home for all of our VanPug meetup recordings is on the Skillwave YouTube channel. The link is here. These slides are already posted on the meetup site, and I will post once the video is actually live on our YouTube channel. We'll post a link into meetup as we always do. Uh, just a quick note on this one here. I am not going to be getting this up within the next 24 to 48 hours this time around. It will be coming next week because I'm actually taking tomorrow off, so I'm not doing any computer work at all. So uh, just be aware that it will be coming. Um, um, early next week, you will be able to catch the recording of the presentation from tonight. If you haven't checked it out, we have a cool playlist of Monkey Shorts videos on our Skillwave YouTube channel. I haven't posted any new content so far this year, but we're just sort of doing a rehash of some of our first episodes, power, changing Power Query's load defaults, our uh, you know most watched where people uh, love to learn how to use Excel when the Power Query window is actually open. Um, and then the most commented episode as well uh, for single cell Excel tables and Power Query. There's all kinds of content that are on this, uh, well worth a watch. And there are uh, three minutes or less of technical content in each video. So have a check of that as well. Uh, the final thing that I want to say here is that we're always looking for speakers to come and present at our user group meetups. If you have a cool thing that you would like to share about what you've done with Excel or Power BI or any of the technologies in the Power Platform that happen to stitch into these things, just fill out the, uh, the form down the bottom here and get in touch with us and we will get in touch with you and see if we can get you on our stage. And that is the extent of what I've got for the intro slide decking on this one here. It is now my great pleasure to welcome Celia Alves back to our show here for her presentation on dynamic arrays. So Celia, I'm going to turn the uh, screen over to you here if you want to share your screen and uh, we'll get this one all started. The floor is going to be yours. For sure. Thank you, Ken. Thank you so much for your invitation and everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are going to be talking about dynamic array functions. Let me share my screen before I. I don't know why I decided to work with only two monitors instead of three as usual, and now I'm a little <laughs> bit lost. OK, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> so let's take Ken out of here. OK, so 
this is our topic for today. Dynamic array functions a must have and a must know in Excel. And I do mean that the more I use them, the more I can no longer live without these uh, functions or these capability better said, as we will see in a minute. Uh, we will talk about that. So let me just maybe introduce myself for those who don't know me yet. So my background, uh, my the first part of my life until 10 years ago was spent in Portugal. I grew, the, grew up there. I studied there. My background, academic background is in mathematics. I was a high school teacher for uh, 19 years and then 10 years ago I moved to Canada and for the past eight years I've been working as an Excel business solutions uh, developer. I started this kind of work as part uh, as an employee of one uh, a company, a bookkeeper's company. They had a lot of Excel uh, tools and, and procedures going on there. I helped them automate that and then I discovered that I that's what I wanted to do. I liked to do and uh, I've been doing that uh, since then for multiple companies, multiple business areas and uh, yeah, and keep learning every day. And in 2019, I founded the Excel meetup group here in Toronto because I was looking for other people to learn uh, Excel, to discuss Excel, to, to share what we are learning. And it's been growing. For those of you who don't know that, feel free to check that out. We also meet every week, every, sorry, every month. Um, and we have speakers all over the, from all over the world, similar, similar to what is happening here with the Vancouver Meetup Group. And I'm certified as Microsoft Excel expert, um, certified trainer, uh, and uh, was awarded as an MVP a couple of years ago, in 2020. So it's been quite a journey, and uh, I'm happy to, to share a little bit of what I've been doing in the past few months uh, with Dynamic Array Functions today. So, our session today will be about dynamic array functions and, as mentioned, because maybe of my background as a teacher <clears throat> and the mathematics teacher, when I start to study an, uh, a topic, I kind of need to know, OK, what are the definitions? What are the, the assumptions? What is the base ground? on which we are going to be working. So I needed to really uh, understand what the dynamic array function is or was or what, what is considered dynamic array function. I will start with that, but I will not take you uh, too much of your time. We will go through a couple of fundamental concepts, even because some of you may not be familiar yet with the dynamic array functions, uh, despite the fact that they have been available for a couple of years now. But I posted on social media a question about what people are asking people what they have been doing with dynamic array functions. And I noticed that a lot of people are still saying, oh, I, I don't use them because uh, my employer does not have a version of Excel that supports that. Or maybe I have them, but I am an Excel consultant and my clients don't have the uh, Microsoft 365, for example. So I end up not. Uh, working with dynamic array functions much. So because of that, I'll be covering some of the basic concepts and then I will be mostly showing a couple of things that I've been doing and hopefully some of them will be useful for you. So these will be application examples. So a couple of things to mention. Dynamic array functions are available in Microsoft 365 and Excel 2021. Any other older versions will not have um, Microsoft will not have this type of um, uh, capability. It's a different way of calculating in Excel. So um, it's a different behavior. And it's based this new behavior to calculate and to uh, show us the results of a function. Um, it's a new way of calculation and evaluation in Excel. So there are some differences between the modern workbooks built using this functionality and the old ones. Although there are uh, Excel, the Excel team made sure that there was um, 
uh, the old workbooks will work well with the current um, engine, calculation engine, uh, but there are differences in the way the, the two Excel um, engines work. Um, they require a new way of thinking. Um, and my mind is just getting to start to get, it's just starting to get the hang of it. And it's interesting because once we start to get, first, at, at first it's a little bit difficult to understand the possibilities we have in our hands, but once we start getting used to it, then it's very difficult to go back. I recently had to do uh, a piece of work for someone who was using Excel 2010, I think it was, and it was a nightmare. I, I, I couldn't work or think um, as in the in the old days anymore. Um, each new function requires a lot of time and practice to get to to so that we get to know it uh, inside out. Uh, just one one of the functions, um, the new ex, uh, dynamic array functions. I will tell you which ones they are. Uh, if we want to start exploring all the possibilities of with all the parameters available, most of them have optional parameters. Just one function can, just with one function, we can do an entire session only about that one function. So uh, I will not be covering all the functions here nor I will be explaining um, one or several functions in detail. What I'll be doing is I will be demonstrating some, uh, showing you some application examples, and we will talk about the functions that are used in those applications. So any questions so far? Or any comments? If there are, let me know. Uh, we have a um, comment from Henry that says, I've been able to load up Excel 365 workbooks with dynamic arrays in old Excel, old Excel 2013, and they seem to work there. What are the limitations and differences when using the Excel 365 creative workbooks in 2013? <laughs> That's a good question. So if, if we, if, if, from my understanding, and I'm also learning all this, so uh, I'll do my best to answer all these questions, but some of them, may require further investigation. As far as I'm aware, the old workbooks will work well with the new, with in Microsoft 365, for example. The workbooks that contain the array formulas with con that were created with Control Shift Enter, they are converted to work properly in the current workbooks. At the end of the presentation, I have some resources with information about that and and some some notes about that so how to convert those uh old workbooks the old um, excel formulas control shift enter uh into the new uh array uh dynamic array functions uh if we create a workbook with a function let's say uh, vstack which is a new function uh, and then we try to open it in the older version of Excel, it won't work because it, it does not contain, it does not recognize that function. Not sure if I answered the question. Uh, hope so, yeah, um, he says, yeah, he's uh, for sure. Yeah, new dynamic arrays seem to be converted back to old arrays in 2013. Yeah, as long as there's a function there that exists for it, Henry, I think that's the, the answer that it will, but if it doesn't, then you'll probably get a name error or something like that, I would assume, yeah. so. Yeah, I think I think so, uh, Celia. I think we're good to go. Yeah. Uh, so this is this was kind of the definition available in one of the Microsoft documentation pages. Uh, Excel formulas that return a set of values, also known as an array, return these values to neighboring cells. This behavior is called spilling. Formulas that can return arrays of variable size are called dynamic array formulas. Formulas that are currently returning arrays that are successfully spilling can be referred as spilled array formulas. <laughs> I can I I couldn't understand any of I mean I had to read these a couple of times and couldn't make much sense of this. Uh, one of the things, for example, here, and we will we will not be discussing this, but for me the word formula and function um, should not be the same thing, but we will be using 
those two uh, because it's common uh, in the Excel world to use to say function or to say formula for the same thing. So we will uh, assume that. But what I went, uh, what I did was I created my own definitions, or at least I tried to organize that information with what I was learning when I was preparing for this session. OK, so the modern, modern Excel versions, Microsoft 365, Excel 2021, Excel for the web and Excel for mobile devices uh, have a new way to calculate and evaluate functions and use spilling behavior. Uh, let me show you what is the spilling behavior. The spilling behavior is something as simple as uh, doing this. For example, I have that list there. If I go equal and then refer to the range, there you go. It's spilling. I'm referring to the range. In the old days, we would probably get just the first uh, value of that range. And now, since it contains multiple values, we get all the values there. This is an array. We have uh, this blue line indicating indicating uh, the area where the the array is. Uh, the range that your array is occupying. OK, so this is the spilling behavior. Let me just go back here to my slide and then I'll put the slide back up later, but I'll, I'm just looking at it now. So the spilling behavior uh, is the one that we get when a function that produces multiple results spills the results into the neighboring cells. Note, note that the formula that I wrote is in here in this cell only. If I click here, I kind of see the cell, the formula there, but it's grayed out. It's just a shadow of, of what the real function there. So uh, the formula exists in one cell only. OK. Dynamic array functions. Um, for me, a dynamic array function is any of the functions that were created to take advantage of this spilling array behavior. Uh, one of them is, for example, uh, the unique function. For example, if I want to get the unique list of the products that I have here, I can type unique. And then I can select that range. There's more parameters there, but we are not going to cover those. Just close parentheses and enter. So we now have a unique list of the uh, products. And of course, if we want to sort them, we can use the sort function that also has other parameters. But by simply closing parentheses here, we can get this list sorted alphabetically in ascending order. So these two functions, sort and unique, they did not exist before. Let me maybe click here so that people can see it better. They did not exist before, and these are for me what we can call uh, dynamic array functions. What I identify as a dynamic array function. Uh, along with these functions, there are um, first they, they, they were there were uh, they released six functions, uh, and then fourteen more. And then a couple of others. I will show you just in a minute what those functions are. Um, all the functions that existed. So these are the functions that I that that I consider the dynamic array functions when we talk about that term. But what happens is that all the other functions that already existed before the spilling behavior uh, was introduced in Excel. They can also leverage the um, way of a new way of calculating in Excel and produce spill the race. Um, and so they become dynamic array formulas, if you want to call them like that. So, for example, the sum if or sum if s, uh, sum if s, sum ifs function exists, um, I don't know, maybe since 2000, 2013 or 16. I'm not sure. Uh, some, there's an uh, oh, I missing there. Some if s. OK. This function uh, already existed before and it is prepared to summarize, um, a to do a calculation and aggregation and 
produce one single value. So if I say um, sum if uh, sum if s, and then the sum range will be this one, comma, the criteria range will be this one, comma, and I say, and if I say that I want the criteria to be this cell, close parentheses, I get exactly what I used to get before. So I'm summing all the quantities for apples here, right? But what I can do now in any of the other functions that we always have av had available is in the uh, arguments of the, these functions, the arguments that used to take just one single value, we can now introduce arrays into those parameters. So instead of E4, if I say, give me uh, this range, and uh, notice that when I do and select, when I go and select the entire range, I get E4 and then a hash sign there. I don't know if you can see it uh, well, maybe here. Okay, you can see it better here. Um, this hash sign means all the range that is produced by a formula that is entered in E4 and then spilled uh, multiple results. If there are multiple results uh, resulting from that function or that formula, keep, consider uh, all those all, all those values. Well, the sum of sum, uh, sum ifs function uh, was expecting one value only here. Since we are giving it all these four values, what it's going to do using now this new spilling behavior is it's going to take advantage of one um, uh, behavior called lifting, and it's going to run the sum of uh, the sum if function for each one of these values. So it's going to do sum if range C4, C12, and then B4, B12 for apples, and then sum if for same thing, but with criteria bananas, sum if with criteria grapes and so on and so on. So when we do, when we press enter, we get um, from one of the old functions, we get a spilled array as well. So in the end, we could think that almost every function became uh, a dynamic array function. If we want to consider a dynamic array function, any function that spills um, that spills multiple values, that will happen when we uh, add multiple uh, values to in, when we feed multiple values into arguments that we're expecting just one uh, value. Okay, and this is very interesting because now uh, it will be dynamic. Not in this case. If I add a new, if I add a new value here, it will not be dynamic. Uh, the result will not update because I'm referring to that range only. But so that's why I uh, advise everyone to use tables as much as possible. Not every time, not not always is a good idea, but most of the times it is a good idea. So if we do uh, transform this range into a table, and now here we indicate that we want this range, but now using the uh, structured reference for tables, we get the same result here and in here. Uh, so the criteria, the sum range first, this one, and then missing a comma there, there, there. Okay, and then same thing. The beauty now is that if we add a new, um, if we add a new fruit here, let's say pineapple. it updated there. And because I already added a new row, it went ahead and added the other row. So this is the great, I mean, when we start getting our heads around this, this opens so many doors because of this flexibility here. So let's move on. Um, if there are any questions, let me know. 
Let's no questions on. so far. <laughs> Let's move on. So things to notice here. Uh, this is the hash, the, uh, hash re cell reference that I mentioned when we have the, the hash sign here. If I happen to have something in the way uh, where the formula needed to spill the results, it will give us the spill error. And to solve that, we either have to delete or move this away or move the formula to somewhere else uh, to give it room enough to spill the results. Uh, that blue line, I mentioned it. When we have the error, the blue line appears dashed. And use table as, as always as possible. I mentioned that. I'm looking at my slide here. I didn't switch to back to PowerPoint, but just making sure that I covered everything. OK, so. Talking about the, this behavior, this, this, this possibility of feeding multiple values to arguments in functions that we uh, that are expecting by definition one value only. They were expecting by definition one value only in the old versions of Excel, but now uh, with this new calculation engine, we can take advantage of the spilling behavior and start thinking what happens if we feed multiple values to arguments that were supposed to be one unique value only. So for example, the VLOOKUP formula, that is one of the uh, functions that everyone knows and it's also it has also been available since ever. Um, we have these four arguments. Lookup value is supposed to be one unique uh, value. Uh, table array is supposed to be multiple values, a set of multiple values. And uh, calling the index number is supposed to be one value. When, and these single values are called scalars. And the range lookup, uh, the type of, um, the type of, uh, what do you call it? Um, when we are, when we if, we, if you want an exact match or an approximate match, it's also supposedly one unique value. So let's see what happens if we enter multiple lookup values at once. So I have two, I have two names here that are part of this list of books here. And if I go and do similar to what we've done with the sum ifs function. If I say VLOOKUP, oh sorry, VLOOKUP, this value, but now instead of saying just this one, look up for all these, in this case they are just two, and where? In the table that I called books table, and give me the second column of that array, that table, with an exact match. So let's put false here. This acts similar to what we just saw. We just, we just saw with the sum ifs, sum ifs function. So it will be using the lifting behavior to run the VLOOKUP function one time for this value and one time for this value. So we have two lookup values being entered here. OK, so uh, not a lot of surprise considering what we've seen before. Other examples, what happens if we uh, fit two values as uh, to the column index uh, parameter? So we will go to lookup. Let's try just one value for the first argument. And then where? In that same table. Uh, column index. What happens if we put two values here? We can use the curly brackets. So I can say, give me the second and the third columns. And then false for exact match. And that will also spill the results this time horizontally because we have um, a comma there. If we happen to put, let me see if this works. Oh, it does. 
uh, it's semicolon I meant. Yeah, so if we put a semicolon there between the two and the three, let me maybe do this so you can see it better. It will spill, spill vertically because this is a separator for uh, rows and the other the comma is for columns. So with comma, it spills into columns. If we try to feed multiple values to more than one argument that we're expecting just one value, most of the times it does not work. I guess it's uh, we are asking for Excel to handle arrays of arrays and apparently it does not do that. So if instead of I7, I put here these two as we did before, uh, it will give us the only the first, it will not operate, it will not give us the two columns. So the result is not really what we wanted. So if we want two columns and we want to uh, look up two values, uh, one of the things we can do is to copy this formula down the same way we were doing before. So it's not totally dynamic, okay? And, hey, Celia, Celia yeah. before you move on from that one, can I just ask you, or maybe, maybe you're already going there, but instead of using the two, three as your um, as your your reference to go for, for multiple columns in this particular example, mm -hmm. can you write your formula for J7 where you are actually selecting from I7 to I8? So it is picking up the two rows. Mm -hmm. and, and then instead of using the curly braces for the two, three, can you select the column names, author and pages? Let's see. So here we would indicate these two, right? Yep, yep. And then and instead then, of the curly braces, just select select the author and pages columns. Like this. Both of, yep, both of them. And go with it from that and hit enter and get rid of your Ulysses down there. Doesn't and like. It is giving you F. That's <laughs> weird because I'm sure that I managed to do this, but maybe I was only ever using one item on, on my own. But yeah. uh, So maybe I yeah. did that with I7. All right, never mind. Yeah, cool. Thanks. if we use just one item, uh, then it's most all of good. these cases it will work. But uh, in fact, we will see here one situation where there's a it's a little bit different. So there you go. And we can also enter multiple parameters. I already have the formula there written. I forgot to delete it. Uh, multiple parameters to the last argument where we choose true and, true and false. So. If so, in here I'm saying look up these two values, and in fact I'm look at, look. So here is is that one case, Ken, where I'm feeding two values for the first argument, and I'm feeding also two values to the last argument. So I'm saying look up these two values in the table books ta in the books table, and give me the second column, so just the author name, and then do a search with false and with um, with true and false uh, or, or better said with exact match um, approximate match and exact match or the other way around zero is exact match <laughs> I'm kind of confused so we are doing the two the two uh, lookup types let's call it like that approximate and exact match you see here this name does not exist there only have we only have her we have her atomic tangerine engine but we don't have a book called her just only that here and we have our list sorted here which is another thing that we need to take into, into consideration when we are using the lookup and in here i fed it's one formula only is generating these four values these are the results for um with false as the last parameter for the exact match so it's not finding the book her but here with the approximate match when it looks for her, because it does not find that, it defaults to the previous one and um, gives us that author name. So it's kind of a silly example, but just for us to see that we can do a lot of different things with this type of um, gymnastics here with the parameters and feeding multiple values. Uh, and finally, here I have what if I want to feed multiple tables well the tables are already uh, the this parameter the lookup 
the the table array here, the second parameter, is already expecting expecting multiple values. Uh, the only way I could think here is okay, we could use, for example, VStack. Okay, so what we can do, let me start from scratch. Imagine we have two tables of books, two lists. We have this table here, books table, and this one books table two. We can go look up, view look up. Um, if you look up this value, where? I want in the two tables, so I can create one imaginary table that contains the two tables. And for that, we can use one of those two new functions, uh, dynamic array functions. It's the vStack function that allows us to st stack vertically uh, arrays. So we can say stack the table, um, table books table, uh, that's called like that, books table, with the other table, it's called books table two, stack them on top of the on top of each other, consider that as one table only, and now uh, give me the author and an exact match. I did I said exact and typed and okay, that one. Okay. Um, what happens if we here select multiple values it also works because in fact this is the same as the the first one uh, nothing changes here this is still one array only okay uh, that we are feeding as the table array and then we can uh, refer to multiple lookup values okay so this is the idea of this exercise here was to show the possibilities that we have at hands with these functions. Any questions? We have one question from Nishant. If we have a really long table, will it affect the performance while using VStack? Well, it might, but I've been surprised with, um, I've been playing with putting functions inside, inside the functions, creating names with the let function and Lambda and and I, I'm surprised that even copying that function throughout a lot of through a, throughout many cells it still performs very well, uh, but I haven't done tests enough to to answer that question. Okay, uh, any other questions? That was the only one. Okay, so we talked about that. Uh, we saw these examples. These are all the functions uh, that were created specifically. Not uh, so after this uh, new engine calculation engine was available. So these functions were created already, uh, considering uh, already to take advantage of this behavior. Uh, you will get this PDF later, uh, and these links will give you access to all these functions if you want to take a look at them. So these were the first six ones uh, released, and then uh, last year, I believe, we got all these 14 functions at once. Excuse me. And then Lambda is not really, is well, I guess we can consider it, uh, Lambda can be anything, it's a, a way of, programming with functions, I would say. Same way with let. And these functions here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven functions, are functions that uh, work with a Lambda function. So they are called Lambda helper functions, and they are used together with a Lambda function, any Lambda function that we uh, may create. So let's see some examples. Uh, the examples I'm going to show here, uh, I guess this, just with the drop down lists, I guess we, this is one or two sessions. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show everything. Um, I will try to show as much as possible the functionality and not as much how they are built. And then if we have time or if you have interest in learning, uh, one of them more in detail, I can show you that. In fact, I will be more specific at the beginning, uh, but maybe we will then run a little bit so that we can cover more uh, a couple of other scenarios. Okay, 
the pen and drop them. I'm just opening another file. OK, so simple and dependent drop down list. Um, this was this is one of the things that everyone needs to do to do every now and then. And the simple scenario uh, is already um, a lot more easier to do now with dynamic array functions. The scenario where we have one drop down and the second drop down that depends on the option that is selected on the first one became a lot easier with the dynamic array functions. So imagine this situation. We have a list here. I hope you can see well. If not, let me know if I if I need to zoom in. Here on the left, we have a list of different trades and a list of vendors. So imagine uh, a company managing uh, construction sites or managing uh, construction projects, and they have a list of vendors for each one of the uh, the, the trades. So uh, on a quote quoting uh, sheet tool, they may want to select, OK, let's choose one trade and then let's choose. So let me delete this. And then depending on the trade, so let's say um, concrete work. OK, concrete work here, we have two names. So while it's quite easy to uh, build the first dependent, uh, the first uh, drop down. The second one, I don't want to be seeing all the vendors. I just want to see the vendors that are for concrete work. These would be only these two. So here, there we have the, those two names that are the ones that are available for this trade. If here now I choose another one, let's say demolition, for demolition we have three options and the options are these ones. OK, so how is this built? Um, for the first one, if we come here to data and then data validation, we see that is referring to 04 and then we have, I don't know if you can see it well, uh, no, I cannot have it. I was trying to zoom it, but it, it's not working. So, but if you don't see, let me let me know and I'll find a way. So, for the source here of this data validation, we have 04, and then with the hashtag sign it yet, meaning that the list that is feeding uh, is. Um, uh, the list, the validation list for the drop down in the trade column is anything that is generated by a formula that exists in 04 and that is spilling results from there. 04 is this cell here, and the formula that I have there is similar to the one we saw before when we were talking about the fruits there, the unique list of products. Sort unique, and I'm pointing to this table, this column of that we have traits. So this is very, um, very handy to, to be able to do this because I can refer to that table. I can have multiple, the uh, I can have a value repeated multiple times and I don't have to be extracting the list of unique values as we had to do before. Maybe we would have to use uh, um, the remove duplicates, copying and pasting, and then we had to maintain that list manually, or maybe we would use a pivot table. There were all, ki all kinds of tricks to get a list of unique values. But this way, that's it. That's the only thing we need to do. If I add a new trade here, and I say uh, new vendor, I don't need to do anything to maintain this. Now I have the new trade showing here and the new vendor showing there. I, we will talk about what's going on here on the side. So if I, if I say new trade again and new vendor too, because now I have two vendors for this new trade, everything updates here. So now I have a new trade and now I have two options available for this and automatically the new trade will be available here and the two options for vendors will be available here 
So I don't know if you were doing this before. Um, for a situation where, like this one, where we have this many trades, and there are situations where we have a lot more different categories, having to create the dependent drop-down lists for all those categories was quite uh, laborious, but because we had to create different tables or lists, one per each manually. And now with this formula here, and then this formula here that I need to copy down, we have everything dynamic. What's the formula here? Well, uh, this this formula here. First, uh, I need to I created two names. I'm not going to be to go into a lot of detail, but then if you want to learn more, let me know. I first created a name, so let's see here. Uh, OK, so if you click here and go to data validation, we see that the validation here is vendor for trade. The vendor for trade, if we go into names and look into vendor, vendor for trade, or vendors for trade, that was the name. It's this one here. Uh, sorry, there's I'm missing, I'm missing something else before that I want to show you. Uh, okay, but I can show you here. Just a second. Go back here. I can show you here. We have this formula here, and this formula is referring another name, uh, a, a name that is trade in row. OK, let me show you first trade in row. Trade in row is uh, a name that refers to the cell on column G. So if I click here, it will look into column G, the same row. OK. I don't want to be too much in detail because then it can be a little bit um, difficult to get there. But you see, simple and dependent list, that's the name of the sheet, and then G4. So if I click on this cell, if I click on this cell and go into name manager, it tells me the value is uh, concrete works because that's what's on the left on cell on column G. If I click here and go to the name manager, it tells me that the value is demolition because now my selected cell is this one and the value in column G is that one. So the trick is only on creating the number, the name pointing to uh, column, uh, column G, so this one, and not locking the row number. So lock the column, do not lock the row. OK, this makes uh, when I say trade in row, it will look into that value and it will know, OK, now I want to find concrete work. So then the other formula that is in the data validation here. That's the trades, the trades per vendor or better said, vendors for trade, the vendors available for the trade. We have this formula here. I can copy it maybe to, to bring this up. Not copy it. Not sure if this is selecting. I've been having a lot of issues with Excel lately. Very buggy. I don't know what's going on. OK. So what let me. Let me close this and see if I can put it here. So it's going to the sheet that the name got kept there, but that's fine. Um, let me grab that again. Oh, Jesus, nothing works. Control A, select all, nothing. I don't know what's going on. Otherwise, I, I'll try again. If not, I have to explain with that little thing. It, I, I cannot copy it. Sorry, I don't know. So let me let me explain from here. So what this is doing is. Go find. Go find the trade that you find on the left. Go find it here. 
go find it on the O4 hash, dash, uh, hash sign. Go find it here on this field array. I can pass this file for you later and you can uh, explore it on your own. And then, well, once you find it, go and find the spilled array on the side, on the right. And so the offset function here is just to say, OK, find the value here, then move one to the right and then grab all the spilled array that you have in there. There's one piece missing here, which is this spilled arrays. These spilled arrays here were created with the transpose function. And the filter function and the sort function. OK, so what am I, am I doing here? First, I'm filtering the list of vendors by. The list uh, by the trade name, OK? So I look at this trade name and say filter this list. Give me only the vendors that we find, for example, for concrete work. There will be two of them. And then so that's the filter portion here. And then I'll say sort them so that we have them alphabetically organized. And then with sort and filter, we would get the results in a column. But because I want them to the side, I go and apply transpose. The thing is that we cannot transpose. If we put an hash sign here, that would be the ideal. Put an hash sign here so that we would get all these ranges. We would get all these ranges in one go, but the transpose that is one of those cases where we would fitting. We, we, we would be wanting Excel to do an array of arrays. So the transpose itself already produces an array, and then I'm I would be asking to create an array of the array of the, uh, uh, one array per each value in this array. So multiple arrays. It does not work. So in this case, uh, the hash sign there we cannot put it. We can only create one uh, array here, and then we need to copy the formula down and go down as many as much as you'd like uh, enough to uh, account for any new um, pairs of vendors, uh, any new categories for trades and uh, corresponding vendors. Phew, is this too complicated? Let me know if there are any questions because I, I know that <laughs> this is something that people can use and I know it will be difficult if you are looking at this for the first time today to uh, understand it all, but if you can understand the understand the concept, then you can adapt this for your work if you want to. So, Celia, you got a couple of questions that are in the queue here. Um, now, Winston has made a comment. Uh, what if you use two rows instead of transpose? I don't know if you thought on that one at all or not. Well, if you if we don't put if we use two rows, meaning uh, I'm thinking that he's asking what if I put always on time and water expre express below it. If that's the case. Then we don't have room, so let's say I'm putting this here. Um, and then let me move this to somewhere else because here. Let's say I have this here. And then let's say we do just sort and filter. Is that the question? Could be. I Winston can clarify if that's uh, if that's sort of the the route that you're going. Uh, so if I Let's see, there's probably a parenthesis meet, missing here somewhere. OK, so if I do this without a transpose, I will get two rows, but now I don't have room to get the vendors for demolition. So these are the two vendors for concrete work. Now I want to have the demolition vendors somewhere. That's why here I have vertically the list of trades. And then horizontally, we could go far, far as much as needed. The list of all the vendors for each one of the trades. 
Yeah, so so Winston is uh, is suggesting using two rows instead of transpose, but I think I think the the issue that you're looking at in this case here is that I mean Celia's used transpose specifically to make sure that we're not actually having things that are spilling into multiple rows, but rather getting them into multiple columns, or else it ends up blowing up the ability to to actually look at things um, in in you know you, you have to stack them in the the same sort of order, I guess if if you like. Um, is my yeah. impression on this one. Yeah, so so, so the, I don't know. I want this to be fully dynamic. I don't know if concrete work is going to have one vendor only or is going to have 10. So I need the options for the concrete work to spill to the right, uh, not down, because down then it will be the uh, row to have the list of the values for demolition. I could uh, if if they were they were always two vendors each, I could find a way of having an empty having an empty cell in between each one of these names, and and then have the the list of vendors vertically, but only in a case where the number of vendors is always the same. Because otherwise, since I don't know, right? I want this to work as dynamically as possible. Yeah, Nishan is asking if we can look up concrete work and spill multiple matching values. And I mean, that's exactly what's happening here, uh, Nishan, is that, um, you know, when in Celia is looking in, in column P, she's looking up the value for concrete work, but spilling multiple results to column P, column Q, and, and so forth going sideways. Yes, so for example, electrical here, we have four vendors. So if I choose electrical, uh, it it will give me the four options that are the four options that we have here. Right. Um, Henry is also asking if, if there's a limit of just two levels for dependent fields. Yeah, so in situations where now we have a third that depends on the second, uh, what I've done is I repeat this process. So I create a list of I create a list of unique values for the second column. May, I would probably do that on a separate sheet to allow this to grow freely without interfering with each other. So I would build uh, a validation state process, but on a separate sheet. Uh, and notice here at the top, I have sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. So I'm demonstrating everything in one sheet only, but on a real scenario, this would probably be in one sheet, the, the list with all the trades and vendors, and then on a sep separate sheet, it will be a list for input by the user. And then this will be a helper sheet with these lists that will be supporting the drop down functionality. Any all other right. questions? No, not at this point. OK, so only with drop downs, there's a lot of different variations that we could go here. For example, drop downs, li drop down lists with multiple list sources. This is similar to the uh, this is VStack again. So imagine that I have two lists, this, in this case, two teams, and I, there's a place where I have a name. I want to add a name and I want to calculate this, the, 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 to look up for, to look up the score for that name. Um, the drop down list here contains all the names from both teams. And the data validation here, maybe I should have started with this one. It would have been uh, probably easier to follow. This one here, uh, it's using combined lists. Ash, note that here I use something a little bit different. I use the name followed with the hash sign. Can you see that? It's a little bit small, but I hope you can see it. So I use the name combined lists with a hash sign at the end. What's that combined lists? Um, thing combined lists is this cell only. But this cell contains a VStack formula. So I'm stacking vertically the names in team A table, this table here, with the names in team B table. This is the table team B. And putting them on top of each other. And now this becomes a list that can be the source for my drop down here. And then I'm using VStack again in the VLOOKUP. Let's see if I can put this bigger for you. So first I'm just saying if it's empty, it's empty. Don't give me an error. 
and in this case I used XLOOKUP and the lookup array and the return array are both a combination of the corresponding columns in the two tables with VSTAC. Any questions or comments? Nope. All good. This so this one was easy compared to the other one. <laughs> I think I. Let's switch the examples. Other example is uh, filling multiple columns using text split before and after. I'm going to open another file here to show this example. So in this case, let me see here. I can close the other one. In this case, um, I have a similar uh, thing going on here. So I have parts and categories and one depending on the other. And then this one, oh, I, I chose one that only has one category. Let me choose maybe someone here. Uh, this one has two options, okay. And then the different thing in this case, this is the third one dependent on the second. So it kind of answers a little bit of what, a, what the, the uh, previous question was. It illustrates a little bit. And it has a nice trick here where not only I'm showing the supplier, the suppliers that supply this type of part, but I'm also indicating the price for the two options and so right here the person can see oh I want this it's because it's cheaper and automatically we get everything filled in then so here I just select the supplier together with the price and then I get the columns with the supplier name only and the cost only that will then be used for my calculations here um, filled in there how does this work so we have excuse me in this case, we have the prices uh, list here. We have a number of dif different things, so we have the category and then the part description and then uh, we have the supplier here and then we have the price and I created this last column here that uses text join. With the delimiter. Uh, this delimiter space and then greater than space just to simulate kind of an arrow. And it's joining the supplier name together with the price. And then I'm also using the text function here to make sure the price shows as a currency there. Or as a number uh, properly formatted so it's easier to identify the prices. OK, so here. The data validation here, uh, data validation, is referring to that list supplier and prices for part row. I keep I I use names a lot, so if we go, it, it will. I don't. I'm not. I I think I will skip this. But that name is referring to that column, to this column here. Okay. Um, and yeah, so that's it. Uh, in fact, that it, in fact, let me let me go back because I'm, I may not be telling you the truth here. Uh, what was the name? I forgot. Sorry. Let's see. Data validation. Supplier and prices for part in row. So supplier and prices for part in row. Supplier and prices for part in row. Is this one here? This one is using the same trick as before that offset and index and so on. So this is built somewhere here. Okay. So we have one one list here with the original, the categories, and then the corresponding parts. Okay. And I think I'm missing one here. 
the, the, the trick is exactly the same. And what happens then is here we use another dynamic array function. The text before. OK, text before the delimiter fills in the supplier here and text before text after here. If we use the text after function after the delimiter, it fills in the price. OK, and then we can use the price multiply by quantity to get the total price and so on. Well, you you some of you could be thinking, why don't we just use text split? Yes, that's the another file here. Uh, where did I put it? I guess I lost just a second. So if we use the text split, something happened here with my file. If we use the text split, we cannot do that on a on a table. Okay. In this case, I have a table. If I was going to use here text split. And uh, split what? Split this uh, text. And what's the delimiter? Space greater than space at close parentheses. The idea was that this would. You see that it's uh, you. We have a dash line here. The idea was this would spill the two values at once the supplier and the unit cost splitting by this delimiter here in the middle. But because we are working inside the table, dynamic array functions do not work inside tables. Even if they have room to spill into, they will not work. So we could use this function. Let me double click here. We could use this function if we were working on a range instead of a table. OK. Questions back. So, so far we have looked into text before, text after, split text, VStack, um, at least these new array functions, all used to make these drop down lists work. Uh, what else? OK, enough of drop down lists maybe, and it's also time for us to end, right? So it's we are reaching the what, how much time, if any, do I have? Uh, you're I mean, you're, you're at time, but if you want to continue and go forward, you can't. OK, I mean, we don't we don't have a, a hard stop, but um, I, I do want to just no. throw out. There's one one comment in the chat, which I thought was kind of amusing. Henry has actually sort of made the comment of, you know, when when can we get Microsoft to actually format the dynamic array or have the formatting ex uh, extend to the cover the entire array <laughs> and the, it ends yeah. off with microsoft please and i'm like yeah no kidding that would be a really nice thing wouldn't it but um yeah, yeah. that's one of the annoyances of the dynamic arrays is that and i didn't cover that i didn't mention that that's a good uh, uh, thank you for pointing that um they don't they don't uh, when we if we let's say let's say here demonstrate in fact so that people who are not so if we have um if we have let's say dates and i'm referring to that range I will not get dates formatted. Maybe the first one will automatically convert just because it was recognized as a date, but the other ones are not getting convert, are not getting the formatting. Same thing with currency, as you've seen before, I had to do a little bit of tricks there. Um, 
yeah, so that's one of the annoyances about dynamic array functions. So yeah, so that's it. I have other examples. I prepared the number of them to show you on different things. Uh, maybe I'll show you just this last one, but I don't want to take you more time, too much more time. It's just, I think it's, this is very amusing. Um, so this seems to be kind of a huge uh, project. It has, uh, it's again an estimator. Lately, I've been doing a lot of this stuff. <laughs> it has the same drop downs, similar tricks and all that. But the interesting one of the, the things I wanted to show you here is that the first we started by building this sheet for the refrigeration, refrigeration department and then uh, the owner wanted two other sheets that are similar for the two other departments. OK, they also have the similar drop down tricks here. One of the things that was interesting was that initially we had created this list and he said, oh, I want all the prices combined in one list only, even if they are for different departments. Then after we created the first department, he said, oh, no, I changed my mind. Now I want, uh, I want, to, I don't want to be seeing here when I select a section, uh, a category for the, the refrigeration. I don't want to be seeing the, the categories for the other departments. And to make things worse, uh, some of the parts were overlapping. So some of the things belong to multiple departments. So I was thinking, how can I make sure that the lists, price lists are maintained uh, in an easy way without having to maintain the same value in multiple tables. And the uh, idea was here in the list. I just added these columns here and said each one of the categories, I put an, an X close in the rows that belong to each one of the departments. And then here I created with um, filter and sort, I say filter the table, filter the column with that have an X for refrigeration, column refrigeration. Here filter the column for mechanical and here filter the column for plumbing. And this will give us the sections that will appear in the first drop down. And because the other ones do not appear, then the second and the third will not have any problem because they will be looking into what was chosen first. And the other thing here is that in the end, at the end, we have a project summary sheet that uh, is just a mirror of everything else that is happening in the other sheets. And so the idea is to have everyone uh, seated at the table at a meeting, each manager for each department manager is taking care of their own business and then the final project manager the the project manager of, of the entire uh, work the company wants to see everything here reflected and the totals there okay this seems like a huge thing because it's combining all the other three but if we go and do control g g and say special formulas okay and then if we paint in yellow these are the only cells with formulas in this sheet only the yellow ones and they are all the same except for these ones that are referring specific uh, values in the other forget about that part it's uh, just refer it well the big portion is just one formula and it's not a big formula. It's just this one here. Oh, maybe I need to. Take the yellow out. It's still not very easy to see. Can you see the formula? So. It says map. The refrigeration detail named range. With the Lambda function that says if it's empty, give me empty. If not, give me the cell. So this this goes like this: the refrigeration, the refrigeration uh, detail 
is this named range. So I came here and I gave a name to this range. OK, refrigeration detail. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to have a new sheet here. If I go here and do refrigeration detail, I get this. The zeros, most of them are related to empty cells. I don't want that. So I go, give me the map, do me a mapping of that range. And for each cell, do what we would, we would do before if we had to do formulas, write formulas for all the cells. I would go, I'm going to create a lambda here, and I'm going to say, consider a cell C. C is for cell. I, it, it could be any other letter, and say, if C equals empty, then give me empty, otherwise give me the value of C. That's the if function, that's the lambda function, that's the map function, close, and there we go. So now we don't have, we just have zeros when there's, where there's supposed to be zeros. And then for the rest, for the formatting, I just go here, let me maybe select the correct range. Refrigeration. Uh, detail. So select the range, control C. Come here to the first cell. Paste format. OK, and it pastes almost everything. For some reason, the formatting of the table um, does not transfer this way, so I need to select the table separately. Control C, go here. And paste formats. There. So we just a couple of clicks, we transferred everything in that range into the summary sheet. And then it's just a matter of copying the same formula and replacing the name of the range here to get for the other sections in the other sheets. Just give separate names for it to each one of the areas. We could even get, have just one big name, but there were a couple of rows that I didn't want to. So I, in, in each sheet, I separated in two or three different name, named ranges and everything is combined with uh, in the project summary. So uh, the team can be in a meeting all together, each one on their computer, each one can be making changes to their section and everything is reflecting in the summary sheet um, and it works online. All these works in Excel online, which is something that people are using more and more with um, SharePoint. So that's it. I'm going to just go through the last slides because um, we don't have time for more examples. So this was the. The cost summary sheet. I have another one, task manager. So dynamic array functions, ups and lows, I, I should have here. Formatting is not transferred. With the formula, but. Um, it's not an option for workbooks that need to work in older versions of Excel, cannot be used in tables. But a good thing is that it works very well in Excel online and mobile versions. Um, I, I created recently a tool for myself for my tasks and I use it on my cell phone all the, all the time. Uh, it works very, very well. Fewer formulas mean less probability of error because with one formula only we can generate a bunch of different results. Um, here at the end, then I'm not going to read this to you, but whoever is interested, they, uh, you can get this file and you can look into the information about how to convert the old uh, workbooks with into uh, the new Excel versions with this new behavior, this new um, calculation engine. And one note that I also I have not tried this because very rarely I reference book other workbooks with formulas. I don't think I ever do that. If I need to import values from other workbooks, I will use Power Query. 
but for those of you who have that habit, uh, know that dynamic arrays, uh, dynamic array functions are not uh, most of the cases they don't work very well to refer values in other workbooks. The workbook needs to be open. And then I have a number of different um, resources here, here at the end. I would like to indicate uh, to mention the, the video that we have here at the bottom indicated by J Bill Jelen. It's a presentation by uh, Joel, uh, McDade, Joe McDade by, from Microsoft when they were prepared preparing to release this new dynamic array the spilling behavior and it has a lot of information about how things how excel used to calculate and how it it calculates now and it has a lot of very important concepts for those of you who are interested i recommend that video this is information by mike gervin i initially planned to talk about that but then i went another route is just formulas the old way versus the new way. Uh, so, for example, just just the first one. Look at this big formula there. This is what we used to have to do that now we can do with just filter just with this piece here and same thing for other for unique and for sort. And that's it. Thank you everyone for your patience and for for being here there's my contact information feel free to reach out in any of the social media channels um and yeah that's it i'll i'll be having um i'll be having a, a promotion soon during the global excel summit um for my course, if anyone is interested in exploring that, feel free to contact me. The sales page is not available yet, but let me escape from here. The sales page is not available yet, but we will have a discount for 20% during the event Global Excel Summit. Feel free to reach out and I'll give you more information. That's it. Awesome. Thank you forever. so much. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. I can tell you a funny story on the uh, the Mike Gervin side of it with his uh, Mike Gervin's a monster when it came to the, the classic array formulas. And uh, yeah. he had a book if uh, if people weren't familiar with this, which was called Control Shift Enter. And it was Mike's book on how to work with dynamic arrays. And uh, I remember Bill Jelen joking when uh, when the dynamic arrays first hit the scene, he said, oh, my God, poor Mike's going to have to change his book to just press enter. And that was, you know, that was the, the joke around that because a lot of the stuff got so much easier. Um, you've got it on your shelf somewhere, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so. and, and now he has this Bible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With there everything you go. about, about uh, Microsoft 365, where he covers everything, including what there we were go. talking today. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Thank you so much for coming back and uh, and doing this for us uh, today. I really appreciate it. Um, it was a, an excellent run through of these things. And uh, thanks everyone for coming as well. Uh, I am going to get the video um, produced and uploaded to the SkillWave YouTube channel. But as I mentioned, uh, that will be happening next week. And Celia has promised to send me uh, the example files that she can share. So we'll get those posted up uh, with a link on the Meetup site as well. Uh, once those are available um, sure. until yeah till next time folks uh, don't forget to sign up for the uh, the meetups that we have coming up with uh, with Joseph and for us and outside of that um, yeah thank you for coming and we'll see you next time and Celia hopefully we get the chance to actually meet in person uh, you know in a couple months at the MVP yeah. summit that'll be great hopefully yes so <laughs> there you go thank you awesome Ken. thank you everyone you for coming awesome all right have bye a good bye. one folks we'll see you next time.